All right, let's review. What's a one-form field? A one-form field is something like a field of dot product functions. And what's great about a one-form field is that you can integrate them over a path. So if you think about a one-form field as looking something like a field of rulers against which we can measure tangent vectors to a path, then that's where we're at. That's the story. Let's say you've got a one-form field alpha and a path gamma. Now, the one thing that we know is that the parameterization of the path doesn't matter. If you fix the path and you fix the orientation, you can move along it at any speed you want. You'll get the same integral. However, the shape of the path really does matter. If you change the path, then you're sampling that one form field at different places. However, in certain circumstances, the shape of the path doesn't matter either. It's only the endpoints that matter. Here is one classical example where that path independence shows itself, and this comes up in gravity. Let's consider the gravitational field on a point mass. Let's do the simplest setting. Let's say that you're near the surface of the Earth. You've got a gravitational field F that is minus mgk. M is the mass, g is the gravitation constant, and the z-axis is pointed away from the center of gravity. Then in this case, we can convert that force field, that vector field, to a one-form field alpha sub f, given by minus m g d z. k converts to d z. OK, so what happens when we integrate that one form field along a path? Let's say gamma is a parameterized path in R3 that has components x of t, y of t, and z of t. Then how do we integrate alpha sub f over gamma? Well, this is really simple. The integrand is minus m, g, d, z. m and g are constants. d, z looks at the derivative of gamma and pulls out the z component. So that means when I integrate this, I'm really taking the integral as t goes from a to b of minus m, g times what? The derivative, d, z, d, t. And then I'm integrating that with respect to t. Now, of course, this is a simple integral. The minus mg comes out, and we're left with z of t as t goes from a to b, giving us a final answer of minus mg times the change in the z coordinate, z of b minus z of a. Now, we were kind of formal about that, parameterizing the path, plugging it in. But of course, if you look at this, there's a simpler way to think about it, namely that the integral of dz is z and you evaluate that z coordinate from the start point to the end point. That is what is really giving you this classical, well-known result. The thing to notice is that this work done against gravity is independent of the path you take. It only depends on the endpoints of the path.